Look at those mushrooms! Holy smokes! Hello everybody! We are going to be doing another Mushroom Logs video. And we are also going to unveil our mushroom growing kit. Take it, Mom. Ooh, so here it is. Look at this big baby. Yes. This is our brand new mushroom growing kit. We purchased a mega mushroom kit from Northwest Growers to start growing mushrooms inside. When I first opened this box, I was really overwhelmed. There's so much stuff in here. Um, now that I've read through the instructions a couple of times, and I've looked at everything, um, there are a ton of steps, but each step seems fairly straightforward. Um, the instructions do use a couple terms that I'm not totally sure I understand yet, but from context, I, I think I know the gist. Um, however, this first step seems pretty simple, so let's just get started here. So what's in this kit? We have perlite. Yes. Let's put this down here. We have the humidifier. Looks like cotton, but it's not. <laughs> we have a digital thermometer. Mm-hmm. To use how, um, well, uh, I think, how hot or cold the mushrooms are to help them grow. That's right. Uh, air pump. Air pump, I have no idea what it is, and it looks more like fish. <laughs> it is used for fish. Um, LED light and, and hose for the pump. Uh, I have no idea what that is, but I'll go with it. A uh, plug-in timer for our light. Perfect. Perfect. I think that means like it um, controls how long the temperature is. Yeah, it controls how long the light's on. Oh, wow. now um, I get it. This is a little heating pad thing for I have no idea our mushroom. why it looks like metal. And then finally, our little jars. Mm-hmm. Used heavy. to grow um used to grow um the mushrooms. Our pre-sanitized jars. Uh did you say sanitizer? They are sanitized, yes. I was like, what? Why would you pour sanitizer on mushrooms? Ah! And then finally, the cord for our lights. Mm -hmm. That's not really the most important, but yeah, I'll go with it. There are a few items that are not in the kit, but are very useful. First, have some alcohol swabs and antibacterial spray at the ready. These are helpful in maintaining cleanliness and reducing your chance of introducing bacteria or mold that can be harmful to you or your mushrooms. Second, have some single-use rubber gloves to reduce the spread of any bacteria present on your hands. Plus, it's nice to keep your hands from drying out when working with the alcohol swabs. If you are using syringes to inoculate your substrate jars, you will want to have some sort of a controlled open flame. The flame is used to sterilize the needle before being plunged into the substrate jars. Optionally, it's not a bad idea to keep a logbook to record the date, time, temperature, quantities, and other important metrics to track and improve your technique. And last but not least, it's important to have a lot of patience. Not everything will go according to your plan. Often, suggested and recommended tips or tricks need to be applied differently based on your equipment, the environment, and your understanding of the biology of fungi organisms. Let's get started with step number one. Establishing a consistent heated growing chamber. Okay, the first step in setting up the kit is to get the temperature correct. And we do that by using this heating pad. And let it get warm for 10 minutes just to make sure that it works.
This has been on for about 10 minutes on high and surprisingly it's not that warm. I, I thought it was gonna get a lot hotter than this, but I guess our air temperature in our house is about 68. We only need to heat this up to about 76, 80, something like that, depending on the mushroom spore you're having. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my bucket on here, turn this down to halfway and we'll put the lid on here and check it in about an hour and see if it's gotten up to the right temperature for our spores. Okay. Ultimately, it took us a day of messing with our thermometer to get it to the target temp. Now that it's finally stabilized at about 74 degrees, we're ready to start inoculating our bottles. Yay! So here are the spore syringes that we got. Um, when we initially received them, we put them in the fridge. After reading through the instructions again, we noticed it said to store them at room temperature. Hopefully this doesn't mess up our process. I took them out of the fridge and they've been at room temperature now for uh, about a week. We got a shaggy mane a lion's mane, and a pearl oyster. Um, they're all supposed to grow at roughly the same temperature and conditions. Um, I feel like that's one of the first things that we learned right off the bat was that not all of the mushrooms that we might want to grow grow in the same temperature ranges. And so if you wanna grow multiple types together, you need to make sure that they can be grown together. Um, so here's our syringes. You can see they all look a little bit different and they have a lot of clumps. So before we start, we will have to shake those up and try to break up the clumps before we start. This is where the process seems to get a little more intense. These are the bottles and they've been sterilized along with the media that's inside before it was shipped to us. Um, we need to keep it that way during the inoculation process because mold also likes growing in the same conditions as mushrooms. And obviously that can make us sick, but it can also prevent our mushrooms from growing at all. We're gonna try using the oven method for inoculation today. The idea is to minimize the airflow in the area and prevent germs and mold spores from getting into our jars. First, we're going to warm the oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius and let that warm up for about 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sterilize this needle. Till it's glowing a little bit. There we go. Let that cool for a second. Take off the foil. You can see there's four holes that are pre drilled, and that's where we're putting the spore syringe into. To the sideways, try to get it to go down the side about one milliliter in each one. I'm going to clean it off between each hole. Foil cap back on, but leave it in more of a dome so there is some gas exchange while that's starting to grow. Now we will put these in our grow kit and wait for them to grow. At 
least four le lessons in this episode. The spore syringes should be stored at room temp was the first one. The second one was that different mushrooms grow under different conditions. So be sure to read the descriptions and buy types that can be grown together. The third was it takes quite a few syringes to inoculate a full kit. Each jar takes about half of a syringe. So our three syringes was enough to inoculate six bottles. The instructions show that quite a few more bottles could fit into our grow kit. So we will see how much these jars produce and who knows, maybe it will be enough mushrooms that we will buy the same amount next time. If it's not, then we'll buy more syringes next time. Fourth and final thing that we learned was it took a while to adjust the heating pad to achieve the right temperature in our grow kit. So set that up the day before and make sure you have time for that to stabilize. Please subscribe, thumbs up, all that jazz. Our next video, we will be completing the step, birthing the cakes, which is a really ominous title. It sounds like it could be difficult. <laughs> Join us next time to see how we do. Hi, but I'm going to not be in this video because we're videoing very late. It's my bedtime, so. Bye guys.